The state legislature this past session okayed numerous laws affecting Arizona businesses. And here to explain what's changed and what state businesses and consumers need to know is Alexis Glasscock, an attorney with Fenimore Craig. Welcome to Arizona Horizon. Thank you. Thanks for Good having to have me today. You, here. you know, there, we have a number of things here, and we're going to get to wine and puppies in a second. But we're going to start with the transfer of digital assets after death. Goodness gracious, what are we talking about here? Right. What this bill does is it answers the question, when a person passes away or becomes incapacitated, what happens with their digital assets? And as the digital world matures, uh, more and more people are storing things on either their hard drive or through an internet provider, they're uploading it to the, um, to the cloud. So for example, um, people's most important possessions, their photos, their videos, or their business documents are stored on their hard drive. Um, similarly, a lot of people are creating digital wallets where they store their credit cards, their frequent flyer miles, their bank statements. All of these things are frequently password protected and can only be obtained via their computer, their iPhone, their iPad, wherever they've stored these documents. And this bill deals with uh, how those are how those are uh, returned to the heirs. Well, how, how do they do that? Well, how so, um, under the old law, the terms of service agreement, when you download software, basically, you agree, yes, I'm going to uh, subscribe to your terms of service. And those terms of service agreements would actually supersede a will or a trust if mm -hmm. the person had one. But under the new law, there's a three-tier system. So some, um, some providers like Facebook, some vendors, have an online tool. And with that online tool, you can go into that, edit your profile, and say who's going to receive your digital assets if you became incapacitated or deceased. If that exists, then that supersedes everything. In the absence of that, you would have a trust or a state that says which heirs would get your documents and what types of communications they could get. And in the absence of that, the terms of service agreement would govern. So basically, if there's an, an online tool, uh, the designation pretty much trumps a will. But if there's no online tool, the will wins. Yes, absolutely. And you may have some situations where you have something in your will, say your Yahoo and Gmail were going to go to your spouse. But now you've decided Gmail should really go to my brother. So you change it through your online tool, and that would govern the Gmail account. But the will would still govern the Yahoo account. Interesting. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to wine. Direct shipping now uh, by wineries, that's okay. So, um, you know that unique bottle of red that you and your wife might love that you get in Oregon and um, hard to get in Arizona? Well, this bill deals with that exact situation. It allows the consumer to buy um, cases of wine out of state and have them shipped directly to their home. And it also, it's a win for the state because it increases tax revenues. They will actually, these wineries will obtain a permit from the, uh, de the liquor department and they will also uh, pay, t they will withhold the taxes at the time of sale. So the, the state revenues will go up and consumers can have these great wines. Uh, as long as they have the permit. Yes, as long as they have the per permit. And, and the amount of wine they can bring in is capped. Uh, the first, it begins in January of 2017, and people can bring in that first year up to um, six cases of wine. Then it increases the next year to nine, and then the third year to 12, and it's capped at 12. Interesting. And uh, I noticed in researching this, we're ranked 14th in the country in wine consumption. Exactly. So this could be a boon to this state as people now can get that very special wine that they love. All right. Uh, from wine, we go to puppies. Municipalities can no longer ban puppy mills. What does this really mean? Right. So a lot of people um, like to purchase pets through, um, through pet shops. And what this law provides is a way to assure that pets are placed in homes and they've either purchased the pet shops, have purchased these or have obtained these pets either through uh, rescue shelters or through breeders who are USDA approved. So the objective of this bill is to prohibit the puppy mill, the, the pet shops, from um, unintentionally uh, selling puppies that were not in USDA-approved conditions. So how do you enforce something like that, though? How do you know it's USDA conditions? Well, th through this law, when you go to buy your puppy, you'll be able to, um, or your cat, whatever you purchase, there will be, uh, at the time of purchase, a website, the USDA website, so you can verify that the information they're giving you is correct, that those animals actually came from um, reputable breeders who have um, complied with these, and in the event 
event that a pet shop doesn't comply, there's teeth in this bill. Yeah. They either get a fine, they get fined uh, if there's a violation, and then they can even have their license taken away and they won't be able to sell pets. But we should mention that shops don't have to sell rescue or shelter pets exclusively now no. because of this. So you no. can go to reputable, they just have to have that USDA certification. Absolutely, and, and, and the consumer now has the choice um, to, to purchase from either. And there were some municipalities that had different regulations, and this creates a uniform system for the whole state so that you can verify what kind of animal, if you're buying it from a breeder. Last one here, quickly, drones. I guess, can, wait, can you just go photo anything you want from the sky, or your, your neighbor, anything you want? I mean, do, what's going on? Well. Um, the, the great thing about this law is it tells the, the nation that Arizona is open and ready for business. So from a business standpoint, it's terrific. Uh, from a privacy standpoint, it doesn't change anything. Uh, there have always been privacy laws and trespass laws in place. And what those laws do is define where you can and can't go. But it's a well-established um, laws that you, you can, you don't have an expectation of privacy in your front yard or your backyard. So if your neighbor wants to look down from his second story or climb on his ladder and look over or fly a drone now, he's able to do that. But that's different from being able to look into the house, photograph things in the house. That would be a violation, but actually flying over the, uh, the airspace would not. So if I got a knucklehead neighbor who's got a drone just, just circling the backyard because he wants to spy on what we're doing, a-OK -okay in Arizona? Well, it is, but, but the great thing about this from a business standpoint is it now creates uniformity so that, um, as you know, Amazon and other companies are experience, experimenting with technology to deliver packages via mm -hmm. drones, as well as um, other businesses like realtors who want to foot, uh, shoot aerial footage. So now they can come to Arizona and they'll know that um, it's the same rules wherever they're doing business. And the good thing about this is we're going to see other industries pop up. We'll find suppliers for drones and engineers coming. And it should lead to a whole, um, you know, all kinds of new needs in the business community um, for, you know, from my industry, from increased um, IP work, increased business formation, and, um, you know, increased compliance with regulations. So for a firm like Fenimore Craig, this, is, this could be a really terrific thing, as well as for other firms that will support this new technology. All right, we got to stop you right there. Thank you so much for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it.